Hi everyone, I'm Ben Brooks, as, as Rowan just mentioned, in uh, from Bureau of Van Dijk. And essentially, my role is I actually head up our academic arm for, for the UK and Ireland. Um, but I also happen to be what we call the relationship manager for uh, Dublin as well. And, and essentially, I'm the link between the uh, yourselves and, and our company. So, in this session, as, as just mentioned, we'll, we'll provide a full overview of uh, FAME. And there's a few key points that we'll touch on. So, we'll touch in first and foremost the the help guide and um, now i appreciate that's uh we're doing a demonstration to show you how to use this but i'll also show you the help guide this is a quite comprehensive help guide with both videos and, and text documents and and also a training program in there as well and it's gone through quite a few updates over the past uh couple of couple of months or so um secondly i'll i'll provide a full um overview of the navigation of the tool so the two key ways in which we can use the data set so either searching for an individual company or building a search using the the 300 search variables that we've got and then from there we'll look at uh, how to create our own unique panel data set so how to create um, a panel data set which includes for example historical financials for a number of different companies as well and then ultimately from there, we'll go into the actual depth of data that we've got available for our, uh, for each company within the data set. And then we'll finally touch on those analytical tools as well. So the built-in analytical tools that we have, which, which are extremely useful. And you can also create your own tools from there as well. So firstly, what, what is FAME? So FAME is our UK and Irish data platform. It holds roughly 14 million companies or so. Um, and importantly, that includes both active and dissolved firms. So when we're looking at companies, we can look at both uh, active, but we can also search on dissolved firms as well. And we don't remove any data sets from the platform either. Uh, sorry, any companies from the platform either. So uh, if they were, as long as they were dissolved within the last 20 years, they'll, they'll appear within within FAME. So, Firstly, as I mentioned, I'll touch on the, the help guide. So this can be found up here in the where the orange question mark is. Now, if we select that, it opens up this um, box here and we have a search bar, but we also have key areas which people have searched on in the past as well. So we've got how to build a search. And as you'll see for every option that we've got, we've got a walkthrough which is a, essentially a skin which sits over the top of the, the FAME platform and grays out every area that is irrelevant to what we're looking for. We've got a video, um, which all the videos are roughly two to seven minutes long, easily uh, manageable. You can watch them uh, and it will show you a step-by-step -step guide of how to find what you're looking for. And then personally, my, my personal favorite is the guide. So the guide is a text document and you can open that in an, another tab and run it side by side as well. Again, it gives a full breakdown of, of how to, in this case, create a Boolean operator, build a search, et cetera, as well. Um, but if you can't find what you're looking for, say if we're looking at ownership, for example, we can simply type in ownership into the search bar here and it'll pull up everything that we're looking for. So if we're looking for unconsolidated accounts or consolidated accounts, we can type that in here and that will show us exactly what, what we're looking for and it'll give us all the information on that as well. And then finally, we, we've got a training program. So this is quite new to the help guide. And this is partly the reason I wanted to, to show this is because we have a standard and advanced option. And you can see how much uh, percentage is complete here. Um, so as you work through this, we can have a tour of fame, building a quick search, searching on individuals, etc. as well. And this is great. This is something that's brand new. It's really good. I've, I've kind of played around with this as well. And there's a little quiz at the end. And, and it's quite fun and interactive way to, to explore fame. So again, if someone's got spare 20 30 minutes or so i'd always recommend just having a look through here especially if you're new to the fame platform something like building a search searching on an individual it's, it's a brilliant option so that's the help guide and that's a, a very high level overview of the help guide but it's always good to to showcase that as it's something which nine times out of ten can answer the questions that, that you have and especially with that search bar in there as well and that can be found where the the question mark is here so moving into the actual fame platform and, and the data set so as i mentioned there's two key ways in which users use, use this data set we can search for an individual company by using what i call the google search bar i get told off for of calling it this but it essentially works in exactly the same way so if we type in a company 
what this will do is this will search the entire database for everything that matches what we're looking at, uh, what we've searched here. So as you can see, we've got Balfabeti and we've got this at the top. Uh, this is ordered in terms of turnover. So as you can see, 7.3 billion in turnover. And as we scroll through, it goes, it reduces. So if there's an individual company we're looking for, you can simply type them into the search bar and pull back all the information that we, that we need on that individual company. Now the second way and the most common way our, our data sets are used is to use our search variables here. So we have our headings on the left, subheadings on the right, to build quite strategic lists of companies. So this is reducing those 14 million firms down to, to say 100, say to 250, exactly what we're looking for. And we can be as broad or as specific as we want with the search, the search variables. So I've actually created one earlier today for the, for the purposes of this, uh, this demonstration. And we'll talk you through the search steps and, and how this works. So it's always worth noting that step number one, when we're building a search, is automatically active companies. Now, if we're looking to search for both active and dissolved, we can simply uncheck this, uh, this search step, or we can go into the, um, the headings here and just select a search on status, which is either active or dissolved or liquidation, or there's a, there's a few that we can search on. Similar to the help guide, if there's a variable that you're looking for and you can't find, so for example, stock exchange, we can simply type that into the search bar and it will pull up what we're looking for there as well. So rather than having to go through all the headings, you can simply use the search bar here and that'll help. So we'll move through the, uh, through the actual search and it works in a step-by-step -step process. So step one and step two and step three and four. So in this case, what I've done is firstly, searched on all active companies. Secondly, I've gone into location. So if we select location here, we've got the ability to search on regions, postcodes, so both inward and outward postcodes or a radius of a postcode, for example. We can also do counties, countries, and then again, distance, so the radius. I've gone for, for postal regions. Um, however, what we've got is government regions, nuts regions, and then we can search on the different types of address as well. So whether that's a primary trading address or a registered address, um, we, we can search on all of those. And as I said earlier, we, we can be as specific as we'd like. So if we start to open up the, the locations, you can see we can start to go to individual towns as well. Now to add a search step, simply select the plus, that will add to here. And then once, it, once it's OK, turns blue, select OK, and it'll add the search step. If we go back to the, the search, the next step that I've gone for is stock exchange. So I've specifically asked the data set to search on all firms who are associated to the FTSE, whether that's the FTSE 100 all the way through to the FTSE fledging. Now we can select individual stock exchanges. We can search on, if we go to stock exchange again, individual stock exchanges, so main stocks or alls, uh, sorry, all, and it works exactly the same way. Select the plus, it'll move across, wait for the okay to go blue, and we can add the search step in. On top of that as well, we can also search on SME companies as well. So we use the, um, bear with me, where is it, there it is. We can search on publicly quoted firms, so all publicly quoted firms, all SMEs. So this uses the European standard of SME, so the EU definition. Um, or you can use a combination of the financials, employees, et cetera, and create your own as well. But as you can see, we've got pre-built options in here. So any company which appears on the FCA, um, any late filing companies, so companies who have filed late, CICs, German companies with a registration, finance conduct authorities, and we can also search on gambling commissions as well. So we have these pre-built, but I've mentioned I've gone straight for the, the FTSE. And then finally, what I've gone for in this search is, is the financials. So if I select on the financials, we can search on any variables within the balance sheet, P&L, cash flow statements, and ratios. 
Um, if I go to PL here and show you how this works, it's preset to million and it's preset to pounds. So if we'd like to change that, we can simply select that, change it to euros, for example, and we can change the unit as well to thousand, million, or billion. Now it's preset to turnover, but if we drop, use this drop down box here, we can select any of the financial variables or line items here. And then we've got different options here as well. So we can look at a value. So simply if we put a one, it's a minimum, only showing me companies with a million um, pounds turnover. We can do a maximum as well. So likewise, we can do only showing me companies with a maximum of a million pounds. We can look at the top five through to 250. And what we can also do, which is quite interesting, we can look at firms with growth rates and rates of decline. So this is in terms of percentage. So any firm who have grown their turnover um, 5% over the last available year, that's how we do that. We can also look at companies with a positive and negative trend. So we can do this for all financial variables and we can do this for a combination of financial variables as well. Now, this is preset to the last available year. We can select the time period here as well. So we can go down, search on 10 years of history. We do have 20 years of financial history available within the data set itself for, for all companies. Um, but when it comes to the searching, we can, we can only search on 10. That's something we're looking to increase over the next kind of 12 months or so. But at the moment, we can only search on that those 10 years. Now, this is an extremely basic search that I've put together just for demonstration purposes. And it shows a, an example of how we've reduced a list of 6 million companies down to 154, which match what we're looking for. But as mentioned, we've, we've got 300 search variables and we, we can search on anything. So we can search on directors, individual directors, the age, the ethnicity, the, the gender of directors as well. So for example, only show me um, uh, companies who have a female director, we can include that in there. And then another one that we've got is M&A as well. So we can search on M&A activity for any firm within the data set. So if I select mergers and acquisitions here, we can see if the firm have been, are the acquirer, so that's a company buying another company, the target, the company which are being acquired, uh, a vendor, advisor, or equity provider as well. We can search on rumored, announced, completed, and pending, all the way through to withdrawn and post postponed as well. We can also search on different deal types. So whether it's an acquisition, a demerger, an IPO, for example, especially if we're looking at stock exchanges, share buybacks, everything you can imagine there as well. We can select our own time period. So as you can see, we can scroll all the way down. We have preset dates, but we can also put our own in. Values of the deal, so a minimum and maximum. So that works in exactly the same way as the, the financial variables work. And then multiple as well. So when you look at EBITDAs, revenues, profit after tax, before tax, et cetera, as well. So that's quite interesting to, to really drill down into, into different companies. Um, however, what, once we've built that search, now what we want to do is see them in a panel format. So we want to see these 154 companies in the, in the panel format. So we select view results. And what this will do is this will present those 154 companies in a table view here. So as you can see, we've got all the companies and you'll find everything is nine times out of 10 ordered in terms of turnover with the highest turnover at the top. Now we've got all the names on the left-hand side. And then what we've got here is information that we think you want to see. Now, again, repeat myself here, but nine times out of 10, this isn't, this isn't relevant to yourself, especially if we're looking at different courses, different research projects. We want to populate this table with data which is relevant to ourselves. So we're looking at that historical data, for example, historical financials. And we want to see that in a, in a panel format over time. The way we do this is we go to add slash remove columns here. So we select add slash remove columns and this will open a new screen. So all the information that we've just seen in that table is on the right hand side here. And if we remove all that, this now gives us that table with just a company name. Now, when we built our search, we've got 300 search variables and all those appear on the left-hand side here. So it works in exactly the same way as building search, 
So if we go to key financials, we get all the financial variables here. We also get obviously the search bar. So anything we can't find, simply type it into the search bar and it'll pull it up as well. But we'll use the financials as, a, as an example. So if we use turnover, we select the, the wheel or the cog, however you, you view that here. And this will open this new window. And this gives us the options that we were presented with earlier. So the units, the currencies, the, the columns and the exchange rates. But importantly, what we can see here is that 20 years of financial history. So if I select a few, just for, again, for demonstration purposes, this will now populate that table with those years. So if we get rid of the last available year, 2020. And now what I can do is any variable, financial variable that I, I want will replicate this. So if I select a uh, number of employees, it replicates that time series that we've, that we've created. We can do this for directors. We can do this for shareholders, as you can see here, some ownership data or stock data. So we can do stock prices as well. But if we select apply, what this does now is populate that table. So if you give that a second, here we go. So as you can see, we've now populated this table with data which is relevant to ourselves. So we've removed all that white noise and populated it with only data which is uh, useful for us, uh, relevant to us, and we've got that time series as well here. Now you can work out of the out of the the platform, the online platform itself, but personally I prefer to work out of Excel. Uh, just one for the added functionality, the additional analytics you can do, and analysis you can do as well. So anything you see in a table format like this is exportable to Excel. And we can do that by selecting Excel here, and that will automatically start the export. But what I'd always recommend is selecting Actions, Export Companies. And what this allows us to do is name the file, whatever we wish, select the export format. So Excel 2007, text, XML. The current view, all companies or a range of companies. So we could do one to 10, for example. And this is quite important to point out as well that there is an export limit on the, um, on the platform itself, on the online tool. And that is roughly 1 million cells. So if this table exceeds 1 million cells, you'll be asked to break the, the export down. So this is where a range of companies comes into it. So we can select 1 to 100, for example, 101 to 200, and so on and so on. Um, there's no way around that, that export limit unless you, there's a data feed. We provide a data feed, but that's, that's a, ultimately a separate conversation. Um, but what this means is that you can make as many exports as you want in one day. There's no limit on the exports you can make in one day. It just means if you have an extremely large data set, you may need to break that down. And that's how we do that here. Finally, what you can do is you can also send the export in an email. So if you're working with a colleague, you can put in their email address or your own and have the export sent directly to them as well. I think this is a great feature just simply because it gives you a backup of that uh, export as well. So that's the that's the building a search and ultimately creating our own unique panel data set now what we'll move into now is essentially what we call a company report now the company report is all the data that we have on one individual company so if we, we saw asos in the news today so if we have a look at asos as an example this opens up the, the again like i mentioned the company report so what we have on the left hand side is what we call the complete book. So the complete book is broken down into chapters. And if I start to open this up, you can start to see the depth of data that's available. So with this, I'll, I'll touch on the, the key information page, which I personally, again, think is a, a great overview, a great page. I'll touch on the industries and activities. I'll then touch on the financials. What I'll do then is touch on the ownership and the directors, and we'll move into the, the mergers, the company news as well. So if we look at industry and activities first, we include all the codes that a company files under. 
So if we open this up here, we've got SIC codes, US SIC codes, both primary and secondary. We also have primary business lines as well. And we also include BVD sectors. So this is a combination of NACE codes that we've put together ourselves. And you can search on quite broad sectors as well. Now, on top of that, we also include a paragraph on every, um, every company within the data set itself. So this is actually provided by a company or an information provider called InnoData. And they create this paragraph for every company. And it gives a broad history of the company, who they are and what they do and, and what space they operate in. But again, importantly, what we can do is we can actually search on this as well by using a, a text search for any keywords in here. And so, for example, knitwear, if we were to only search on companies who operate or produce knitwear, we can do this as well. Now we'll move into the, the financials. So if we look at the key financials, like I mentioned, we've got balance sheet, P&Ls, cash flow statements, ratios. But this is the full 20 years of historical data taken directly from the annual reports, which are here. So if you select original document, what that'll do is that'll open up the annual report where we've got all this information from. A little feature that I quite like is, and I don't know how relevant it is in, in some cases, but I, I do like to show you this. If we select the, the number itself, it'll give us a calculation of how that number was calculated and, and where we've got that figure from. So it's only a small feature, but it's something which I, I quite like. And as you can see, we can scroll all the way across for the 20 years as well. Just like before, everything you see in a table format is fully exportable to Excel. And if we're in a company report, we can also export it to PDF. And then we've got full balance sheets, which works in exactly the same way. Profit and loss, which works in the same way as well. Now we're looking at publicly listed companies. Um, when we're looking at SMEs, with our financial templates, so our templates that we see here, when it comes to SMEs, the filing requirements of SMEs and publicly listed firms, they are different. So understandably, a publicly listed company will need to provide more information, whereas a, a small uh, SME will provide limited information and won't be required legally to provide the same information. So you'll see a lot of NAs in here, maybe. Sometimes you'll see data which, like blank boxes like this, for example, if we're looking at SMEs, and that's simply because the, the information doesn't exist. They've not had to provide that information. So that's something to bear in mind when we're comparing publicly listed firms to SMEs as well. On top of that, we include graph, a graphical view, so changes over time, profitability trends and changes as well. And if we're looking at publicly listed firms, we include the full stock profile, stock data, pricing, so we can go down to individual days in terms of pricing as well. And then we've got the directors and contacts. So we list all directors. We also list key contacts within the business itself. And then importantly, what we do is we include previous directors. So if we click on an individual, in some cases we have a biography for them as well. So here we go. So who they are, a link to their LinkedIn profile or social where possible, an overview of their role within the company, both past and present. So their current directorships and previous directorships here. And if we go back to the report, we can then look at ownership structures as well. Once this decides to load. So then from there, we can go into ownership. So ourselves, we, we specialize in, in ownership data. So we go down to 0.01% in terms of ownership. And the best way to view this, in, in my opinion, my personal opinion, is viewing the corporate group like this. So we go down to 10 levels. It's preset to level one, but we go down to 10 levels of ownership. We have the ultimate owner at the top, so the global ultimate owner. We also have all the subsidiaries, including the percentages in terms of direct and total ownership, the dates, the source, so where we've got this information from. So in this case, it's the annual return. And then we also have the country codes there as well. 
And then we've got the definition of what we define as an ultimate owner. You can change this in the settings here to 25% if you wish, but it's preset to 50%. On top of that, we've got beneficial owners, controlling shareholders, current shareholders, and then we've also got shareholder history as well. Then on top of that, we have our news. So we have company and market news. Uh, we take this from a number of different sources, which you can find at the bottom here. So we have Thomson Reuters, our own in-house media teams, The Economist, and then a few more as well. Something to bear in mind, it is preset to the last year. And it's also preset to negative news. Now, I'm not sure why it's preset to negative news, but we can change this by selecting all news. We can also change the time series as well. So the last week, month, or we'll select our own. And we can also include and exclude sources. So if we're looking to exclude any sources, such as Thomson Reuters, we can simply uncheck them there and select apply as well. And then it works in exactly the same way with the mergers and acquisitions as well. So if there are anything, if there is anything here, it will appear in exactly the same way the company market news does. And then on top of that, we include original documents. So you can find all the original documents, such as annual reports, annual returns, notices of change of directors, all under here as well. Again, I can imagine there'll be a few for ASOS, so it might take a second to load. But whilst that is loading, anything you see is exportable to, to PDF, Excel, and then we've got the different options in here as well. But if we open this up, you can start to see we include change of directors, annual returns, annual accounts, et cetera, and everything that you can imagine really. So if you need to access any original documents, they can be found there. Now, quickly moving into the analytical tools that we mentioned. So we have a number of pre-built analyt analytical tools such as peer analysis, pivot analysis, and we also have um, some batch tools as well, which are, are definitely interesting if we're looking at large data sets or looking to merge data sets together as well. So we'll look at the pivot analysis. And this works. So the analytical tools will only work once we've created a search. So we'll use the data from search that we've created to populate the tables. So we've got two, excuse me, we've got two pre-built analytical tools. So we've got region by turnover, industry and region, or we can create our own using our own variables. We can also amend the, the pre-built ones, which is something that I'd recommend doing from, from a speed point of view. So if you go region and turnover, as the name would suggest, it, this will break the, the companies down by the locations that we've selected. And it will also break it down by turnover. So this is in the table format. We can click into these figures here and that will show us those companies. So uh, that match that criteria. We can also see in a graphical format as well. So you we can switch between the two. It could switch between the two. But the, um, and then on top of that as well, what we can do is we can also change the year. So again, it's preset to last available year. You'll see that in through throughout the platform, but you can always change that to the, the time series that you require. We can also change the variables as well. So if you select the pen or pencil that you see here, you can then open this up to view all the variables that we saw earlier. So key financial variables, and others which may be of, of interest to you. So we can change the variable, the columns, and different options here. And then this works in exactly the same way with all the analytical tools. So we've used the pivot analysis, but if we were to go into the peer analysis, it would work in exactly the same way. We can include ratios, growth ratios. We can look at positive and negative declines as well. Or as we mentioned, we can just simply create our own. So use any of the variables that we see. And then again, fully exportable to Excel. The graph, when that wants to show as well, you can f uh, export that and, and put that into to any presentations or, or work that you're working on from there. So the final thing that I'm, I'm quite keen to show you is when we're looking to blend data sets together. So we include many, many different identification numbers. And we're not naive to think that 
academics researchers will just use one source of data the likelihood is you'll be using different data sets and you'll be looking to merge different areas of those data sets together so we try to make this as easy as possible for you and we include something called the batch search so the batch search allows you to upload an excel file and include all the information that you have so if that's the address if that's the name if that's an identification number you'll match the columns up and what that does from there is then match the information that you've put within that excel sheet so it will use the uh, our in-house matching software and match the information you've provided to the companies within the data set itself it's a very quick and efficient way to to pull back information on on a set number of firms a number of firms that you have an interest in or, or that you're working with and um, so to do that we'd create the excel file drag and drop it into here or, or select um, include uh, sorry choose file and then we'd match column one up so column one would be name for example so we'd match the column in your excel to the name I'd, i should have had a, an example here but unfortunately i don't and this one isn't the best as this was just just kind of playing around but basically what we do is we match the columns up to say name identifier and address and then it would run that search extremely quickly and efficiently and pull back all the information that we have and if there are multiple names um where all multiple companies that we think could be a match we'll provide both and it will give you the option to then select the correct one as well so it's just something to be aware of especially if we've got companies that we're already working with and we like to pull data back on rather than trying to build a search to, to get those companies we can simply upload them and match them to the to the data that we have um, so with that that is uh, basically an introduction to fame 